from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. disciples of the witch dance and prepare to receive the witch's instructions. This is the witch in her full supernatural paraphernalia, hairy legs, pendulous breasts, long fingernails, but without the mask that will turn her into a supernatural figure. Beside her is her daughter, who has been rejected by the king of the country. In revenge for the slight to her daughter, she is now training her little novices to spread pestilence and death. Kneeling in front of her, they answer her instructions on how to spread plague. They go off, and the next scene shows a pregnant woman among a group of people who have fled their plague-stricken village to wander the roads. This is a birth scene where the pregnant woman, played by a man, gives birth to a child while witches lurk about to steal the newborn child. A doll which is stolen by the witch child, tossed in the air, killed, and returned dead to its mourning relatives. The villagers mourn for the dead child, putting on a theatrical display of grief. The witches, witch child and witch, and tease the mortals, to whom they are not yet quite visible. As they become visible, the mortals chase the witches.
The witch child is caught and held by the hair, a demeaning gesture. In just a minute now, you will see the witch in her supernatural form at the gate of the temple, attacked by the emissary of the king, who fails to conquer her. She wears over her face a white cloth, the cloth in which a mother carries her baby. And now, coming down the temple steps, the witch dances alone, a figure both frightening and representative of fear itself. She bends back and gives a high, eerie laugh. These are the frightening witches into which the beautiful little girls of the ballet have been transformed. Again, the witch dances alone. And here is the dragon arrived to confront her. As she represents death, he represents life. And they have a long altercation in ancient ecclesiastical Javanese while she holds him by his beard and scolds him. These are the dragon's followers, falling to the ground at the glance of the witch. Up again when she turns her back, down again when she looks at them. She trips through their ranks, runs away, and as her back is turned, up they get again. Rush to the attack, but as she turns, her glance forces them back, 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 back. And she stands and laughs at them, laughs, and then turns away, indifferent. This is slow motion. Followers of the dragon advance, their kisses raised in the air ready for the attack. But falling down again before her glance. Normal speed, and the witch dances again, and then two by two, they run up and attack her. She doesn't resist. She is as limp as a rag doll, but overcome by her power, they fall. lie in deep trance on the ground. And two more come up, fall also. Members of the trance club come and arrange them on the ground, while another pair attack the witch. They lie arranged in two rows, in deep trance, convulsively twitching. And the dragon comes back to revive them, walking between the rows, followed by his priest, who sprinkles the holy water over them. Revived, they go off stage, not out of trance, but in a somnambulistic state, in which they come back in, dancing. The witch, meanwhile, has fallen into a deep trance and been carried away. The dance 
in slow motion. Here come the women, also in a ballet formation. They do not attack the witch. But at a scream given by one of their number, they suddenly go into trance seizures and with loosened hair, turn the chrysis against their breasts. Falling forward, on the chrysis that are held in their tautened arms. This one is struggling as they attempt to disarm her. In the background, you see the men, also in trance seizures. And here, in slow motion, you see the women. The fumes of the incense that is being carried among them to calm them blends with their loosened hair. had said that she would not go into trance, but when the others began to turn their chrises against themselves, she joined them. If anyone becomes too violent, they are disarmed. There are frequent periods like this of slow turning and waiting. Then someone gives a violent scream and they again turn their chrises on themselves. The priest of the dragon moves among them, sprinkling holy water. Now at normal speed you see the men bending their chrises back against themselves and, unlike the women, often falling to the ground. See how that chris is bent? No one is hurt. If anyone is hurt, the people say the trance is not real. A male trancer is being carried off into the temple in a stiff, cataleptic state. Another one is disarmed. A third puts his head into the dragon's mouth, and the dragon holds him by the hair to calm him. Another falls to the ground in a particularly violent seizure. Another trancer is being carried off into the temple court. And another. In slow motion again, you see the look of contorted, seeming agony on the face of this trancer. Inside the temple courtyard, the people arrange the trancers in groups to be brought out of trance. Here a group of boy Chris dancers, lying along a wall in deep shadow, are given incense 
and holy water. They pat the holy water on their chests and hair. This is the old woman who said she wouldn't go into trance today, lying now in deep trance, supported by her husband. And another woman is being brought back to herself by having her hair done up. This one is still in deep trance and children with anxious faces watch from the background. The trancers bury their faces in the fumes of the incense and slowly come out of trance. Here is the old woman again, unwilling to come back to herself, remembering her dances. until finally the priest brings special offerings to the spirit that possesses her to persuade it to leave her body. The priest lays his offering of flowers and rice on the ground. while she continues to dance recalcitrantly. At last, she holds out her hands for the holy water as a sign that she is willing to come out of trance. A dog comes and eats the offerings that have been presented to the spirit. The old woman rises, still half dazed, and walks over to where the closing ceremony is to be held. With a dragon mask behind them, the principal actors in the play come for a final ritual offering before the ceremony is ended. A chicken is brought, which is to be offered by the priest of the dragon. old man on his right played the front legs of the dragon. The chicken is offered. This 
black-haired man is the man who played the witch and who has been lying in a stiff cataleptic trance through the last part of the Chris dance. He sits among the offerings, not yet quite out of trance. Breathes in the incense, takes the holy water, and sprinkles the old man who played the front legs of the dragon. is finished. Here we see an old man just coming out of trance, not yet quite himself. The play is over, but it will be given again and again as the Balinese reenact the struggle between fear and death on the one hand and life-protecting ritual. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.